Hi fellow Earthlings, this is an update on the situation in the Orion Zone. Since the collapse of the Nebu Hive that has started in October 2021, a lot of activity is occurring in the Orion Zone, what we call the Orion Zone. It is called by the extraterrestrials or the Alliance Uru Anna because this old world is not the Tami, it's not the official language, diplomatic language of the Galactic Federation of World, which is the ancient Lyran man language. But it is Anunnaki, Anach language. Why? Because the Anunnaki used to own this part of the galaxy and among other stuff. And they gave it this name and it stayed. I may remind you what happened in September 2021. An elite of Eban Tolgray were officers were caught as they were escaping Dulce Bays. These Eban were in Dulce Bays because they have been working very, um, very busy with the dark governments and the dark military in Dulce since the 1950s, especially 1955, when the Greta Treaty, the agreements with the Nebu, were passed with the MJ-12. So these were the guys, the famous guys who were there, these Eban elite officers. Well, they left, they escaped when the Alliance won the war on Earth regarding extraterrestrial nefarious presence, where everyone was kicked out. Talking about extraterrestrial, non-Terran beings who were working with the dark governments, they're gone. In the reptilian side and in the grey side, okay? So when they were escaping, they were spotted by the Alliance near a portal, near the, the Jupiter portal, and they were caught there by the Galactic Federation of World in September 2021. Thorhan was part of the operation. He was leading his fleet there and he played a role as many others played in this capture. The Eban were brought to the Excelsior, the battleship of the Galactic Federation of Worlds in the star system. But the whole alliance were watching and part also of the operation. The Andromedans, the Council of Five, the Ashtar Galactic Command, and they were all part of the, the involved in it, but um, it's two fleets from the Excelsior who really led the operations, Thorhan and another commander. These Eban were put in stasis just by a frequency shield before they were caught, so they didn't have the time to send a signal back to the hive, because when greys are caught, the, the the queen the hive terminates them instantly then they cannot give location of the frequency key of the hive etc etc well too bad because this time uh, it happened differently they were put in a frequency lock shield kind of in stasis and brought in these stasis pods to Brought in, sorry, brought in in this frequency shield. Their ship was, and then they were was brought to the Excelsior, and then they were transferred into the science facility and put in pods. They weren't dead. They were still their consciousness within, still linked to the hive, and ne things needed to be really fast. Denethor. The man who is Pleiadian man, who or high officer, who is in charge of the secret space programs linked with the Excelsior and the science medical fa um, laboratory, the one who works with Meisha. Remember the mantids uh, that Jean Charles Moyen met as well when he was uh, a child. Anyway, then it all cracked the code of the hive. This man saved the galaxy, and when I say he saved the galaxy, he truly did, um, because. Um, you know, we all knew that what would happen on Earth would 
have an incidence on the whole galaxy. How that could be possible? Earth as a little planet at the edge of this galaxy, Nataru. Well, how could a little planet influence the whole politic stage of the whole galaxy? Well, because it is in the soul system related to the location and the situation on Earth. That is Eban where code and the, the, the code of the hive cracked. 4th of October 2021. A Galactic Federation of Worlds sent back a signal, a message to the Queen. Um, it was something that infected her. And slowly, slowly, slowly the hive collapsed. When I say collapsed, they were instantly, the high were in, was instantly cut from Earth, from any communication with Earth. That means all the hybrids and etc. that were on Earth were cut from the hive. And all the little things that were meant to connect to the hive were inefficient regarding to this connection. 4th of October 2021 started to collapse, all the connection cut. Since that moment, I haven't given you more information because um, I told you that Orhan was promoted in the circle of high command on the Excelsior, which is not a big deal. He doesn't want to make a big deal, okay? But I didn't give you any more information on the situation in Orion since October 2021. So what happened? It took about a year to really stabilize the situation. So Earth was caught from the hive, severed from this influence and connection since 1950, the 1950s. What happens next? In about a year time, the civilization, the civilizations in the Orion zone also were disconnected from the Orion Queen. And it was a potential chaos that needed to be straight away um, circled and managed by the Alliance, the Galactic Alliance of Nataru, very quickly, because that could have engendered a, an unfathomable chaos. So what happened? You know, these people who do that, they're very responsible. So as the Hive, the super hive queen in the trapezium cluster in the Orion Nebula was being, was collapsing because cut from all, everyone, all the greys, and she was losing power exponentially and just withering to a core, really insignificant thing that is still in the trapezium, trapezium. Go back to the Queen, what happened to her in a minute. What about the Greys? That's where the potential chaos would have come from if it wasn't managed by the Alliance. All the Greys that were connected to the Hive straight away were reconnected to their planetary Hives. The Nebu were was was an empire that had com that was a compound of many planetary hives the eban planetary hive which has started the super hive the grails uh mintaka grails the ebans from, are from betelgeuse then the mintaka grails um Bellatrix Uganga, um, Zeta, Reticul Zeta Reticuli, um, all were enslaved. Well, not enslaved, but their planetary hive, hives melted as one together to create a super hive in the Trapezium M42 cluster. Now, so they, their consciousness go back naturally as the laws and the balance of the universe to the super hives. 
their planetary hives, I mean, their, their own planetary hives. So that that's good, but that needs to be looked after. So, and guided, you know, that no more rebellion restart and try to rebuild the Nebo Empire to join hives again. Because when they are scattered, they're not powerful. That's a law that is a law of war, you know, a game of war. Um, you need to uh, dislocate the army. And then um, some were relocated. For instance, the Grails were sent to different pla prison planets in this galaxy because they are... Um, it's more difficult to manage them because they're more aggressive by nature. The Mintaka Grails, Grails, Grey, Tall Grey, Grails. They will, you know, the, the system of a prison planet. I spoke about it a few times. When they chance, they decide, they take upon the choice to change frequency and turn into the peaceful side. They're sent back home. So hopefully that will happen. The Uganga. Urugarog, uh, excuse me if the name is not right, <laughs> were scattered as well. Same thing. The Ebans were left there, but looked after. Because they are the core of the problem. They, they are the ones who started it. So the Galactic Federation of Worlds has a big presence there with the Alliance, the Andromedans, everyone, and especially the Council of Five. They're all centered. Now, the, the whole attention of the galaxy is centered on the Orion Zone. You know? That's why um, they are hyper busy, busy and I haven't been given the right to talk about it for a year, the time that for safety reasons and, you know, um, that this doesn't uh, interfere with their operations. What about the Queen? Uh, she's now reduced to a miserable little core and she's dying. The Galactic Federation of Worlds wants one thing, terminate her. Also, because it's not that she's suffering, she's not a biological being. That's a reason, an excuse. Oh, she's suffering, let's terminate her. No, they just freaking want to finish with her. She's been like bothering everyone for millennia. The Orion Wars and everything. That was... Her, they, they, they want her dead, <laughs> dislocated. They, they want her dead. But the thing is, the Galactic Federation of Worlds needs the avail of the whole alliance. But at this stage, I think the whole alliance agrees. Now, there is a hierarchy above them, above the alliance of Nataru. The Intergalactic Confederation with the group of the Cedars, they need to say their word on that. I'm pretty much confident that they will join the idea of the Federation. It will happen very quickly. Uh, the Queen is dead. Long live nothing. <laughs> because that's over. But there's a third party that needs to be uh, mentioned. The Anunnaki. The Anunnaki are widespread throughout this galaxy. There are different branches. They are uh, originally from Boutes, as uh, Alex Collier revealed. Um, and from there, they developed into colonies everywhere. There's a main empire, the main empire of Anunnaki, which is actually called the Old Empire, used to own Nataru. They used to own the whole galaxy. Except, when at the height of their expansion, there was one quadrant that wasn't they didn't own it was a quadrant belonging to a civilization of um i'm not sure if they are greys i'll have to to get that uh, confirmed but they are species of their own their name is aker aker they are most venomous more venomous than any anything You've, uh, you've known the equivalent to the Neguma Gnomopo, Gnomopo from Antares as a, a war power. Fortunately, the Gnomopo from Antar Antares um, are our allies now, and uh, that's very good. 
very good. We maybe will have the Aker as an ally, you know. But they're unstable. You don't really... It's difficult to know their intention and, the, you know, the, what they have in their mind. Um, I do not, not know much about the Aker. I haven't been shown how they look like. We need the Anunnaki because... The Anunnaki are the only civilization in this galaxy who managed to have a treaty of peace and non-intervention and non-aggression with the Aker. So as long as the Anunnaki hold the Orion Zone and our quadrant as their circumscription um, and their custody, it's tolerated and they work now I'm going to develop that but as long as they are here they have the custody of the Orion zone and our arm of the galaxy the Aker will never come here okay once if one day the Anunnaki are gone the Aker will come and we do not know how what that can um, uh, generate you know that's a, a known factor. The old empire of the Anunnaki redrew, withdrew when the Nebu Empire grew in the at the time of the Orion Wars. And at that time already, the Ashtari Empire of Anu didn't have much more power than before. So they 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 withdrew. Um they they Interestingly, we are not powerful enough to confront the Nebu Empire at its height. Um, Anu, the High King of the Ashtari branch of the Anunnaki, um, has its own ethics. is very complex, um, is not human. And the way he thinks and he wants to behave and his choices, and it's peculiar to him. It's not like a human would react like, oh, no, let's save these people in the Orion Zone. Let's not run away like cowards. Anu thought differently, he said, this is not a war I want to engage my empire in. Let's withdraw and let them deal with that. Anu, I have to say, is a little bit like this. I start to know more and more about him. And when the trial of Enlil occurred a few months ago, he was like, he hadn't cared until now. And it was the Intergalactic Confederation with the Alliance, which had to, um, to summon him or to request him to come down. And, hey, won't you do anything? Like, you know, Enlil is your responsibility. Come on. And that was an extraordinary council that I described and I was allowed to uh, um, attend holographically. That means, I wasn't, that means I wasn't there physically. I was uh, there as my holographic projection, as all councils uh, usually happen. Um, Anu now has been back. You know that Enki, well, Prince Ia, has been back. Well, you know, when we say prince or high king, um, it's not because uh, they are superior to us. It's their titles, because it's their family, it's their personal titles, you know. Um, so it's not uh, important to us, okay? Just let us not call them lord or band or let us consider equal ourselves as equals, okay? That's very important. Since the Sikar Empire was cast away and um, suffered tremendous loss from the Alliance, since the Nebu Empire was collapsing, the Cedars and the Intergalactic Confederation arrived and in, in, in the situation, in the place, and he came back with the Nibiru, Nibiru sheep and his army of Elohim, as you can call them, but in fact, it's the Intergalactic Confederation and his um, Anunnaki people. 
uh, because you know he's not on his own in this Nibiru huge mothership. Okay. Um, Anu and the old empire, the old Ashtari empire. Why Ashtari? Ashtari, it's a name, uh, means that it was centered in Sirius. The seat of the Ashtari empire was centered in Sirius. Okay. And they, they ruled, it had a big powerful presence in the whole zone, the whole quadrant. So that's why Orion was the first seat for them. Now, of course, Sanu has his word to say about terminating the queen and taking back what was taken by the Nebu. But now there's a change. And the cedars and the alliance are there to work on diplomatic agreements with Anu. Not forgetting the Council of Five of Al-Nilam, who used to take care of the balance in the Orion Zone. What I have been informed of these diplomatic um, treaties, as now I can tell about it because they have been pretty much sealed, is that Anu is temporarily, uh, as a transition period, the custodian of the Orion Zone to protect the Orion Zone from the Aker and anything else. And in his protection, the, um, the transfer is slowly passed onto the custody of the Council of Five. Well, I would say not the custody, the good care of the Council of Five of Al-Nilam. The Council of Five of Al-Nilam is now going to have the main, uh, not control, guidance and administrative role for the whole Orion Zone, okay? Anu will be like symbolical monarchy behind because he will remain custodian of this zone but without doing anything, without not interfering anymore, just to protect and secure regarding the Aker. The Aker want only to treat with the Anunnaki. They don't want to treat treat with anyone else. So we need the Anunnaki. We need the Anu branch, okay? The Anu royal family. Um, regarding the Ashtari Empire, uh, okay, they have the Orion Zone, they have our arm of the galaxy, our quadrant, but they lost a lot with time and they're not a very extend, expanded empire now they have maybe one third of the custody of the galaxy scattered a bit. So it's an, it's an old um, decrepit empire and Anu is not interested in expansion anymore. It's just interested in maintaining peace now. And uh, it doesn't want any trouble. It's like, oh, it has, doesn't like troubles, you know, not like Enlil. <laughs> what is happening in the Orion Zone? is the result of what has happened in the soul system. As the predictions foretold, Earth was the common factor, the, the main crucial factor and key to save, to liberate the whole Nataru galaxy. It has happened. So now, The greys are reforming their hives, planetary hives. Every single planetary hive that was connected to the super hive queen is now looked after and controlled for the transition by the alliance, making sure they will be okay and they will reform uh, as a peaceful planetary culture um, and um, that they will not seek for war and there will be uh, for a time the control of the Council of Five on these cultures until they make sure they are independently peaceful and non-aggressive. So that's how the Council of Five is going to work. Uh, now, as a last point, I may speak about the Alliance of the Six. 
that was created by the Nebu. The Alliance of the Six included, because now it's dislocated, included at its head the Nebu. It was an alliance of interest and commerce and, you know. Nebu, Sikar Empire, Maitra from Andromeda, Solipsirai from Cygnus, Zeta Reticuli Small Grays, there's not all Grays in Zeta Reticuli, and Kiritokurt Vela. These six people, six civilizations are now uh, on their own. Are, this, this agreement of the Alliance of the Six has gone. It's gone. It's gone. The, the Alliance of the Six doesn't exist anymore. Uh, it's everyone for themselves now. The Sikh Empire has so much to deal on their own now. So, um, and ha the Negumak have an eye on them now because we passed agreements with them. So, <laughs> um, the Kirito Kurt, they are traders. So, they're, they'll go where the wind turns, you know. We don't have to mind them. It's not a big deal. The Cygnus uh, Solipsirai also, uh, they do whatever they want. The Zeta Reticuli, um, they are reforming their planetary hive, but that's a, a, a very lot of work there because they were really damaged. There's no more biological entity living there. It's only synthetics. The Nebu have just slaughtered everyone long ago and now it's only cl synthetic clones but they're there and they're conscious they're sentient so they need help so the, the alliance is working there as well um that's it so there is no more fear rebellion war combat related to the nebu it's gone the nebu empire the dominion is no more <laughs>